Hi, it's Marie at last. I truly hope that each and every one of you is doing well. I won't delve into the specifics of why I was away. If you have been following, you know what was going on. It's been a while, so without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Growing up, I not only drew with pencils, I also painted on canvas. I started with acrylic paints and later tried using oils. I enjoyed it because it let me mix different things together and I drew some inspiration from Marian Bolognese's paintings for this project. I worked on my own sculpt again, this time the human version that I printed on a much larger scale. The models you're seeing are the second version that I sculpted. I didn't like the initial print so I went back to redo it. As always, I had to process the print. I got lines across the face during the printing that needed sanding and filling up. I prefer using waterproof sandpaper. I find it much easier to have control over where and how much I sand, and it keeps the dust at minimum. In order to cast it, I had to prime it. I am using silicones that won't cure in contact with resin. To keep some BJD parts in this project, I had to make a double mold. First I had a full clay mold, but it was too messy for me, so I used acrylic plates. I was very careful to seal everything with the clay so the silicone won't leak through any gaps which will cause the mold to fail. I was trying my best to smooth everything out because I wanted the mold to come out clean. My mold may seem unusual, but I was trying to prevent bubbles. I used chunks of clay to support the walls while the whole glue cooled down. At the same time, I had to be sure that the parts will work together correctly. It was finally time to mix the first batch of silicone. Even 
even though it has low viscosity, I am still mixing it slowly. And I don't have the guessing pot, so I try to pour everything slowly. And it seems to work. Releasing the first part of the mold required a lot of patience. The plates were holding too well, but looking at it positively, it's easy for you to see the process. the bottom keys too small and they didn't imprint well. But this didn't affect the performance of the mold, the important ones that are surrounding the head are enough. I had to clean the scalp before moving on to the second part of the mold. made some minor adjustments to the clay to prevent gaps that might have happened. I prefer to cover my molds to keep them clean, especially because they can become very static. It was time to prepare for the second part of the mold. I didn't want to repeat my mistake, so this time I included two acid-free foam boards. I wanted a combination that it's easier to remove while remaining smooth and allowing you to see what's going on. The foam released much easier, and I can reuse the rest for other molds. Before I separated the parts, I wanted to clean them. There was some overflow on the sides that I wanted to remove.
the mold is now complete and I can finally remove the prototype from it. And I wanted to finish cleaning it up. sure that the parts closed correctly and I used artist tape. I was trying to prevent the resin from seeping through. using polyurethane resin. It is also low viscosity so that the air can escape easier. And of course I also pour the resin slowly. It was finally time to demold it. I was a bit nervous because the materials aren't cheap, but luckily everything was fine. This project is personal in relation to goldfish, so my goal was to create three of them. I followed my usual approach of working based on my vision, without sketching the entire idea. The only part that I drew was the tail and fins patterns. To be honest, I had to try a few different sizes and designs before I chose the one that I liked the most. I scanned them and made a few adjustments before printing the final result. There was trial and error but finally I cut the right size. I chose to work with clay because of the look that I was going for. I love the smooth and satin like finish it creates similar to porcelain. If you find this too difficult you can use iridescent foils. I will have a detailed tutorial on how to use them. And it will include a pattern. If you decide to get it I appreciate it so much and thank you. I try to create texture on both sides using different tools. I begin shaping them to resemble movement underwater. Mm -hmm. 
next on my list were the tails. I used the same technique to create the texture. I shaped them the same way I did the fins. And here's a complete set, designed for just one goldfish. I needed an armature to hold everything together. I tried different shapes, but oddly enough, a basic sphere was the best choice. I already had the molds. covered them with glue so that the material would have a grip. I ran clay through my pesto machine and started covering the armature. After the initial layers, I started to add pieces and slowly sculpted them into shape. I grew up having aquariums, but that was a long time ago. So in order to bring my own vision to life, I studied multiple references of real goldfish. The eyes were very easy to make. The technique I used was similar to making resin eyes, but without the base. In the end, I just had to color the backside.
I scoped at 5 just in case something goes wrong and I need to replace them. In my opinion, the best way to attach the fins and tails was by carving their spots. I also wanted to do it before creating the scales. I thought of a few ways to make the scales but I didn't want them altering the body so I chose to cut them out. The only catch was that I had to be careful not to cut too deep or break a scale. The final step in the sculpting process was to connect the parts. I used glue to attach and then sculpt them. I had to be careful because everything was partially cured and could snap off easily. I was trying to imagine the movement of all three goldfish underwater and then I glued them permanently. I covered the eyes before airbrushing because metallic colors can sometimes be stubborn to remove and I didn't want to risk messing up something while trying to remove the paint. I 
first iridescent gold and slowly build it up by applying thin layers. The cast came out great. I was a bit afraid that there might be bubbles because it is a rapid cure resin, but luckily everything was smooth. I sealed the head before adding colors. I don't want any pigment to stain the resin and this also helps build up a texture that makes it easier to paint on. I wait for the sealant to cure completely before proceeding, as it only becomes scratch and impact resistant once fully cured. I mixed my own shade of blue to create the cold areas of the face. I made it very pale because I wanted it to be discreet. And I mixed my own warm tones. When I mix a color, I always test it before I use it. I mapped out the face and I wanted the eyes to be the most vibrant part. And I used pastels to slowly build up the rest. I was constantly switching between paints and pastels to create depth. I used pastels to build the color and then switch to paints for details.
for the first time I left longer footage, I wanted to give you something relaxing to watch and to see the process better. something aligned with the overall theme, which led me to choose warm tones that will complement gold accents. She will be a complete BJD eventually, it's just that this project takes time to realize and I am working completely alone on that, but it is exciting to learn. For the first time I have the proper size eyelashes and I don't have to glue single strands. But that's because it's a much larger scale project. I still took the liberty to glue a few white and orange strands Besides matching the face up to the theme, I also made iridescent scales in my vision she is a goldfish spirit and I just couldn't see her without them.
didn't have the proper eye molds, so I made them specifically for 18mm eyes. The reason I placed them in my color mixing palette was in case I spilled any resin. I used a two-part epoxy resin, along with a UV blocker. a few drops of color to the mixture. Mixing it slowly until there are no more streaks left is my approach to prevent air bubbles, even when using low viscosity resins. experience, avoiding pouring the resin all at once has proven to work best. I always cast more, just as a precaution if I make a mistake and I need a backup. To life, I used combination of pastels and acrylic paints. I either pick the color with my brush or create fine powder on paper, depending on the softness of the pastel. I couldn't resist adding a gold element to them. I make the pupils at the very last step before adding the resin. Apply a thin coat to avoid bubbles, and then I add the rest. resin flow and then carefully push it. The higher the dome, the bigger the pupils will appear.
canvas options and at first I considered using a stretched one but there was a risk that it would loosen under the weight so I chose a wooden gesso board and it definitely was the best option The next step was to position the head in the center. I marked it with a pencil so that I can erase it after I glue it. While working on the canvas I noticed the sides, it felt like something was missing or incomplete, that's when I got the idea to create texture. To complement the overall concept, I trace the edges of the texture with gold paint. At first I intended to create it without hair and only at the remaining elements. However, it seemed incomplete to me, so I crafted a half wig following my usual wig making process. You can explore my full tutorials for more details. I used glue to secure it to the canvas and I had to clean up a few strands. The reason why I chose hair was because of the softness of the texture. chose gold plated wires and fresh water pearls to make the hairpiece I imagined and I made it by twisting the wires Later on I added crystals and gold leaves
I also made a resin cast over shellfish. Initially, I considered using a conch, but it was drawing too much attention away from the larger shellfish, and I added a sealed dried flower. At last, it was time to place the goldfish. I tried my best to hide or mask the wires. I wanted them to appear as if they're floating. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you relax, sharing it would genuinely mean the world to me. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I am also very grateful to my patrons for helping me keep things afloat while I was gone. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Until next time, take care and see you in the next video. Bye!